on this Hi everyone, video. welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. And if you're new here, let me start by saying welcome. My name is Christy. I'm currently following the WW Blue program, but I do provide the points on my channel for all three programs if you're following WW. But if you're not following WW or you're not following any type of weight loss program, that's fine. You can still get some information from my channel whether it be recipes or meal prepping or meal planning or things like that. So if you're new, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Make sure to click the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you're notified anytime I upload new content. So today's video is going to be a little bit different. This is actually a freezer meal and slow cooker video. They're crock pot recipes that you can make ahead and freeze. So I'm going to be prepping the freezer meals. I'm going to be making them into freezer meals that will go into my freezer. And then I'm also going to share with you when I make them. So I'm not just going to show you how to do your freezer meals, but I'm going to follow that through. I know a lot of times I watch some people and they do freezer meals and then that's it. They put them in their freezer. Well, I want to see what they do to make them. I want to see how easy. Is it truly a dump and go or do you have to do other things with it? So let's get started. So for the first crock pot recipe, I am going to be doing, let me take it off my back holders. And before I start, I will have anything that I'm using, I will have down in the description box below. I'll have a link to it on Amazon. So like these bag holders and anything that you see me using, I try to put links down there. Same with my scale, things like that. All right, so the first one I'm putting together is slow cooker ground beef hash. I have actually made this before for a lunch prep. This is going to be six points on blue, four points on purple, and six points on green. This is actually going to make a serving of four. So what I do is just write everything on there. I write, of course, you'll just write whichever one you do if you follow blue. You know, if I didn't have the channel, I would just have six blue on there. So just write the instructions on there. Unthaw overnight in fridge, dump in slow cooker, cook on low, six to eight hours, top with cheese for last 25 minutes. So I'm just putting everything in here and then I'm going to freeze it. So basically with most of the recipes that I do for the slow cooker that I do freezer meals for, I pull them out the night before and unthaw them in the fridge. Sometimes they're still a little bit frozen and that's okay. It usually will cook just fine, um, but usually they'll unthaw pretty good. So for this one, this is actually one of the very few that I make that you actually have to cook something first. So I have cooked up one pound of extra lean ground beef, which is the 96%. So just dump that right in the bag. And the next thing we need with this recipe is 12 ounces of frozen hash browns. I, for the points on this, I use either the great value shredded hash browns or the season's choice hash browns from Aldi. Either one of those has the same amount of points. Those two are very low in points and they have the same amount for this recipe. So if you use any other hash browns besides this one or the Aldi one, then make sure to account for any different points. So 12 ounces, I'm gonna actually just put this right on my scale and weigh out the 12 ounces. And it should be right about half of this bag. Okay. The next thing I want is a celery, one celery stock and one onion. I actually have a half an onion here because the onion that I had was really big. So I'm just using that. So I'm just going to go through and dice these up. I have the camera down too far. Put those right in there. The next thing we're going to need is one cup of beef broth. Just pour that right in there. And then about a quarter of a teaspoon of pepper. And a half a teaspoon of salt. 
And then we need three tablespoons of onion soup mix. You can use whatever kind, Lipton onion soup mix. I'm just using this Publix onion soup mix. And it's three tablespoons, which one tablespoon is seven grams. So I'm just gonna weigh out 21 grams. And then the only other thing we're gonna need for this is a half a cup of Velveeta shreds, which is completely optional. If you don't use that, then just make sure to put it in your tracker to account for the points. But that'll be added at the end. We'll add that at the end. So now just kind of mix it up. Okay, now what you want to do is try and lay it flat and get as much air out as possible. Alright, then just lay that right flat in your freezer and you can freeze this up to three months. And like I said, just take it out the night before you have it. So when I make it, I'll come back and show you it. All right, it's time for the slow cooker ground beef hash. So after you unthaw this in your fridge overnight, what I usually do is spray my crock pot with olive oil spray. Just dump the whole bag right in there. And then we're gonna cook it on low for six to eight hours. And then for the last 25 minutes, we'll top it with the Velveeta shreds. Okay, so the ground beef hash is done. Now we're gonna put the half a cup of cheese on there. You could actually just put the cheese on after individually if you wanted. So my ground beef hash is about done. We are gonna have eggs with the hash. I just sprayed my pan with olive oil spray first. So now what I'm doing is weighing out the entire portion. So we have 11.14, so divided by four is gonna be 278.5. So we're gonna have about 278 grams in each dish. So now I'm just gonna get our dishes. We'll take out 278 grams. There we go. That's how much we get. And then you can put your cheese on the top of that if you want. So an eighth of a cup would go on that. But we are actually gonna put fried eggs on there. All right, so that's what it looks like when it's done. And again, this is six points on blue, four points on purple, and six points on green. But obviously, if you're on green and you have the eggs, then it's two points for each egg. All right, for the next one, we are going to be making Crock-Pot Chicken Philly Cheese Steak. This is three points on blue, three points on purple, and five points on green. For this one, we're gonna put everything in the bag and then we're gonna freeze it. And then when we take it out on thaw overnight in fridge, dump in the slow cooker, cook on low for three to six hours, and then add cheese and cook 10 minutes. This can be served over rolls or you can serve it over rice. So just remember this, the points on this are actually for what's in this bag. So if you're using a roll or something, you'll have to add the points for that. The first thing I'm gonna do is get all my produce cut up. So it calls for three peppers. You can use whatever you want. I am using, I have a green pepper that I really need to get used up. It's not bad yet, but it's not fresh. So I'm using those and then I'm using just these uh, sweet peppers. I have orange ones and red ones. So I'm just gonna get all these cut up. It also calls for one onion, but again, this I'm using the other half of the onion that I used from another recipe. So I'm going to be cutting this up. So I'm just using half of the onion since it was such a large onion. The other things we're gonna need is half a teaspoon of black pepper and a clove of garlic, three tablespoons of cornstarch, and one cup of chicken broth. 
So I usually make my own chicken broth, but I'm all out. So all I did was used a bouillon cube and just made broth. So I'm going to get my bag on my bag holder. And we're just going to start dumping everything in. So I'm just going to dump my chicken in. Actually, I'm going to weigh out the cornstarch, so I'm going to do that now. So I'm just going to put it on the scale. And for this one, I need three tablespoons. A tablespoon of this is actually eight grams, so I'm going to use 24 grams. Next, I'm going to dump my chicken broth in there. And now I'm going to cut up all my produce and just throw those in the bag as well. So I think I forgot to tell you, the chicken that I had was, before I dumped that in there, the chicken is just one pound of chicken breast and I just cut it into strips. This is versatile as far as how you cut everything up. If you want to just cut into big strips for your vegetables, that's fine. We actually prefer ours cut a little bit small, kind of like diced. And mince up the garlic. probably going to be good enough so I'm not going to cut those up um, again the pepper the amount of peppers you use is completely optional so this is going to make six portions and the last thing we need is a half a teaspoon of pepper so now I'll just take it off the bag holder and I'm going to do like the other one first thing I do is seal it up so that I can mix it all up. And then just lay it in there flat. Laying it flat just helps to make more room when you store these. That way you can stack them in your freezer. It makes a lot more room if you lay them flat. And just try to get as much air out as possible. With these resealable bags, it's sometimes harder, it's easier to get the air out of regular plastic bags. So then just set that in your freezer like that and then I will come back when it's time to make this one. All right, it is time to make the Crock-Pot Chicken Philly cheesesteak. So I had this overnight on thawing in the fridge and I've sprayed my Crock-Pot with olive oil spray. So now we're just gonna simply dump everything right in there and it smells good already and then we are just gonna cook it on low for three to six hours I'm gonna probably I'll probably do it for close to six so as you can see I put add cheese and cook 10 minutes I'm not gonna do that because I'm using the Sargento ultra thin provolone and I want to have two slices on each sandwich or if I do it on rice or whatever on each plate so if I put the cheese in there then that's just gonna all mix together so that way I'll just when this is done I'll put it on my plate and then I'll put the cheese on it separately all right so I'm gonna get that on low and let it cook for about six hours the dinner is done so now what I'm going to do is just drain out some of that juice so I have a colander that I hold, have over a bowl just so that the juice doesn't go down the sink I think it's mostly water but just in case it is grease I don't want that going down so now I want to weigh out the entire amount because I want to split this into six
So that is 641. So the buns I'm using tonight are these center split deli rolls. I get these from Aldi. These are five points per bun. They're pretty good size. But like I said, you could put this over rice or you can use some other type of bun. That's totally up to you. And the other thing I'm using is this ultra thin provolone. I'm using two slices over each one. For the chicken Philly cheesesteak, it's going to be three points for blue and purple and five points on green. That includes the cheese, but then your bread or rice or whatever you use will be extra. So mine is three points plus the five. So mine's going to be eight points. And I am going to put the cheese down first. All right, then we're just going to measure out the 106 grams. So as you can see, that's going to be a pretty decent amount. There we go, 106. Let me show you that up close. And then I'm going to put my steak fries on here. So I have eight points for the chicken Philly cheesesteak and three points for 84 grams of steak fries. So I have an 11 point dinner. This is higher than I normally have, but this is going to be worth it. So one thing that this needed after us trying it is some salt, some pepper, and I also added garlic salt. So it's kind of bland. I don't like to add salt and pepper in the beginning just because I don't want things too salty, but... This one definitely needed something. And also for this, if you're on blue or purple, you really don't need to measure it out like or weigh it out like I did because really this is the only points that you're using is the cheese. Everything in here is zero points. So if you're on blue and purple, you can just scoop out what you want. Okay, so moving on, the next crock pot recipe is actually one of my favorite. This is crock pot barbecue meatloaf. Meatloaf in the crock pot is so good. This one I'm using ground turkey breast. I have one and a half pounds of ground turkey breast, and that makes it two points on blue, two points on purple, and three points on green. You could also use ground beef, the 96% lean ground beef, and that would be six smart points on each on all programs. So for this one, we're gonna assemble the meatloaf first, and I'm just gonna put it in this bag. And then for the day that we have it, I will unthaw it in the fridge overnight. I will fold aluminum foil. I'll show you how I do this, but basically I'm just going to write everything on here. So unthaw and fridge overnight, fold aluminum foil lengthwise in the bottom of the crock pot. Basically I take a piece of aluminum foil and fold it halfway, fold it in half lengthwise and lay it in the bottom of the crock pot. And that is what I use to lift the meatloaf out. This recipe came from the WW website. I kind of tweaked a few things, but that's a tip that I got from WW. So great tip. And then I will spray the cook spray the pot with cooking spray, place the meatloaf in there, cook on uh I didn't write it. Cook on low for six to eight hours. I always cook everything on low, so I don't usually have to write that out. I never cook anything on high in the crock pot. Then I'm gonna spread the topping on for the final 30 minutes. The topping I have on the back, so that I will make the day that we actually have it. This recipe, as well as all the other ones, will be listed down in the description box below. So I'm going to set that bag aside and assemble the meatloaf. This is one and a half pounds of ground turkey breast. And this makes six servings. I probably should have wrote that on the bag. This one makes six servings. So I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of salt. So if you want to lower this, basically you can make this amount and just split it up into two bags or three bags. If you want to make, you know, just two servings, you could definitely do that. All right, then we're gonna do half a teaspoon of pepper, half a teaspoon of ground sage, half a teaspoon of ground mustard, which I need to add on to my grocery list. We then need one teaspoon of oregano, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, we need one egg, one third cup of seasoned, I use seasoned Italian breadcrumbs, and then a quarter of a cup of Velveeta shreds, 
If you don't have Velveeta shreds, you could use any reduced fat cheese. I'm gonna use a shallot. If you don't have shallot, you can just use onion. I actually had a shallot that I used for another recipe this week, so I just happened to have it. And then I have on the recipe a half a tablespoon of garlic, but that's just completely up to you. And the other thing that is optional is red or green bell peppers. Since I had those three peppers left, I'm gonna go ahead and cut those up in it as well. I'll just mince them up real good. So we're just gonna go through and dice these all up. Now, just mix all that together. Now, normally what I would do is just dig my hands right in there <laughs> and mix it all up, but I know there are a lot of people that get grossed out by that, so I'm gonna save you from having to watch me put my hands in that meat. So just mix it out until it's all mixed in there real good. With the onions and peppers, you can leave those out if you prefer. It's not gonna make a difference in the points. And also with the onions and peppers, how much you dice them is completely up to you. With meatloaf, I don't like big chunks of onions and peppers in mine, so that's why I really diced mine up real good. Okay, then we're gonna, you can put it into a meatloaf form. What I usually do is put it in my bag and then form it once it's in the bag. So just put my bag on the bag holders here. And just plop it in there. And let me get my hands washed. And then just kind of form it into a loaf. Just get it the best you can in loaf form. You can reform re it once you get it into the crock pot. And there we go. So that is the crock pot barbecue meatloaf. And like I said, for the topping, I'm not gonna make it. Now, if I know that I'm gonna be having this within the next week, I may just go ahead and put the topping together and throw it, keep it in my fridge. But for now, I'm just gonna make it the day that we have it. So that can lay right in the freezer like that, and then I will come back and show you that one. So it is time to cook the meatloaf. So I got this out of my freezer last night and let it unthaw overnight. I'm gonna fold the aluminum foil lengthwise in the bottom of the crock pot, which basically just take a long piece of aluminum foil like that and just fold it in half. Like that. And then you're just gonna push that down in the bottom of the crock pot. And it doesn't have to cover the whole bottom. So as you can see, I have parts on the side that aren't covered. This is basically, you're gonna use this just to lift the meatloaf up. So I kinda actually got it a little bit too long. So now we're gonna give it a spray with olive oil spray. So it should just slide right out. There we go. And then just kind of make sure that it's on there. If it didn't keep its form into the loaf, then you can kind of form it a little better. That is it. And so that's all I have to do. I'm gonna put the top on there and I'm gonna cook this for six to eight hours on low. And then I'm gonna make my topping, which you can either use any barbecue sauce that you want. Just make sure to count for the points. But I'm gonna make my own, which is already included in the points on this, and I'm gonna use two tablespoons of ketchup, two teaspoons of regular brown sugar, two teaspoons of Dijon mustard, and two teaspoons of Worcestershire. So I'm gonna get this going, and I will come back when I put the topping on. So for the topping, I'm just using this light brown sugar, 
and two teaspoons. The next thing I'm going to need is two teaspoons of Worcestershire. And two teaspoons of Dijon mustard. I'm actually all out of Dijon mustard, so I'm just going to use this deli mustard. And we want two teaspoons of that. And finally, two tablespoons of ketchup. Then just mix that up. And then you can just taste it and add things to your liking. So that's it. That will just go on the top. So at the last 30 minutes of cooking the meatloaf, I'll put this on. Okay, so now half hour before it's done, just put the topping on there. Just spread it around. And then let it cook another, about another 30 minutes. So meatloaf is done. Now I'm going to just take the aluminum foil. Should be able to just slide it right off of there. All right, now we're going to cut this into six. And since the ends are a little bit smaller, I always make those a little bit bigger. And there we go. So that's it. So on blue and purple, two points for the meatloaf and three points on green. And then I have, I'm just doing some instant potatoes, the Idahoan uh, roasted garlic and Parmesan baby reds. And those are four points. So my plate is, on blue is six points. Okay, for this recipe, this is a crock pot chicken taco chili. This one I actually didn't pre-package. I'm making this one fresh this morning. But basically all you would do for this one is just if you wanted to freeze these, you could definitely make a bunch of these and freeze ahead of time. You would just literally combine all the ingredients into a bag. So basically, if you wanted to do these and freeze ahead, you'd do like I did with my others. You're just going to put all these ingredients into a bag, put them in your freezer, unthaw in the fridge overnight, and then put them right into the crock pot. But because I didn't freeze ahead, I'm just putting them right in the crock pot. So in this, I have two cans of black beans and one can of corn, and I've rinsed, drained them and rinsed them real well. Just dump that in there, or if you're freezing them, dump them in a bag. The next thing I'm gonna put in is three cans of Rotel diced tomatoes and green chilies. Um, you don't have to use the Rotel brand. You can use, the, there's an Aldi brand and I think a great value brand. It's just the diced tomatoes with green chilies. If you don't like the heat, then you could definitely just use diced tomatoes. So we're going to use three cans. This Crack Pot Chicken Taco Chili is a very popular recipe. There are tons of different variations out there. The one that I got mine from is Skinny Taste. And on my website, I have the recipe for this that I'll link down in the description box below. And on the, my website, it also links you to the Skinny Taste version as well. The next thing we need is about eight ounces of tomato sauce, which I didn't have tomato sauce, so I made my own with tomato paste. One package of taco seasoning mix. And then on my recipe, I have for a tablespoon of chili powder and a tablespoon of ground cumin. You can actually leave those out if you prefer since you have the taco seasoning. But we do like a lot of spice with ours. 
think I'll just do half a tablespoon of the cumin. Next, we want one onion that is chopped up. Now you can go ahead and mix that up. If you're freezing this, then you don't have to mix it at this point. You would just throw your chicken right in there. But I'm just going to be nestling my chicken into this, so that's why I'm not putting the chicken in yet. So if you're putting this in a freezer bag and freezing it, you would just dump your chicken, cube chicken in there, and then lay it flat and freeze it. And finally, I have about two pounds, this is actually a little bit less, of chicken breast that I've cubed up. And the easiest way to cube this is I have these big breasts. I take them out of the freezer and then before they're unthawed, the easiest way to cut them is when they're still a little bit frozen. So I cut them in half this way so that it takes the thickness. So as you can see, they're cut in half. And then I just cube them. And it's a lot easier when they're still semi-frozen. So just put that right in there. So that's all you do. So if you're following along to freeze this and you have this in your bag, then at this point you would just be pushing everything flat in your bag. Your bag should already be labeled what it is, the date, and then you would write on there, unthawed fridge overnight, dump in slow cooker, and cook for 8 to 10 hours on low. I think I usually cook mine for about 8 hours. So just kind of nestle the chicken down in there. And then when it's done, you can top this with sour cream, avocado. I have a couple avocados I'll put on mine, cilantro, anything like that. That's it. So now I'm going to cover it up, and I'm going to cook mine for about eight hours. Okay, it's been about halfway. Now I can't remember if I said all my crock pot recipes, I always spray the insert with olive oil spray. So if I forget to say that on any of these, I, I always give it a, a spray, even ones that are going to be having some liquid in there. So the best thing about this recipe is if you're on WW and you're on blue or purple, this is a zero point recipe. Zero points on blue and purple and five points on green. And then what you'll do is if you use avocado or sour cream or anything, you'll obviously have to account for that. But made the way that it's made, it is zero points on blue and purple. Okay, so it is done. And I'm stirring it up. I can't put you too close because it'll fog the camera up. So if I was green, then I would weigh it out because of the chicken. But since I'm on blue, I'm just going to put it in a bowl. I'm going to serve mine with some avocado. So I'll show you what my bowl looks like after I have it plated. All right, I'm gonna just cut up this avocado for mine. My husband doesn't like avocado, so I'm just doing it on mine. So I'm gonna put about an eighth of a cup of Velveeta shreds on mine for one point. And I'm gonna weigh out my avocado. And let me get it on grams. And I can have 46 grams for two points. And I don't even think I need that one. So let's see what we can have for one point. Okay, so I think I'm just going to do 28 grams. That's going to be one point. So this whole dish is going to be two points. enjoyed that video like I said this is the first time I've done one like this put any suggestions you have down below if there's something different you'd like to see in it and again if you're new I hope you'll consider subscribing I will see you all in my next video thank you so much for watching I'm Christy and I'm planning us healthy